Hi, I'm Rachel Gable, and this is your Fair Cattle Markets update for July 13th. On Friday, Secretary Vilsack visited um, Iowa and announced that the Ag Department, the USDA, will make $500 million in grants, loans, and technical assistance to expand meat and poultry processing capacity. At a news conference there in Council Bluffs, uh, he said the COVID-19 pandemic led to massive disruption for growers, food workers, and consumers alike. It exposed a food system that was rigid, consolidated, and fragile. He, meanwhile, those growing, processing, and preparing our food is, are earning less each year in a system that rewards size over all else. He said to shift the balance of power back to the people, USDA will invest in building more, better, and fairer markets for producers and consumers alike. The investment USDA will make in expanding meat and poultry capacity, along with restoration of the Packers and Stockyards Act, will begin leveling the playing field for farmers and ranchers. He called it a once in a generation opportunity to transform the food system so it is more resilient to shocks deliver greater value to growers and workers, and offer consumers an affordable selection of healthy food produced and sourced locally and regionally. Uh, I am confident USDA's investments in expanded capacity will spur millions more in leveraged funding from the private sector and state and local partners as our efforts gain traction across the country. Bill Sack noted that the announcement is tied to President Biden's announcement about uh, the same day about uh, his executive order on competition. The Attorney General, Associate Attorney General, excuse me, said the Justice Department commends the USDA for today's step towards spurring new entry and increased competition in meatpacking. So we'll see uh, what they have in mind there. In this week's Tri State Livestock News, there is a uh, piece by John. Nalivka, and he said that he was up in Idaho speaking at a cattleman's conference. And he was talking about drought and um, management plans. He said, with the severity of the drought, risk management has definitely been the major topics as ranchers scramble to sustain their herd. And he said that uh, to say that selling off a substantial number of pairs as available forage dwindles to say it has not been a good situation in many areas of the West would be an understatement, which a lot of us certainly know. Um, as we, he said, as we all know, in a severe drought, costs increase and revenue declines as calves are lighter and sales of cows and calves often do not follow a marketing plan other than there isn't enough feed. So he told uh, the folks at that Idaho cattlemen's meeting on Tuesday, we're liquidating cattle at a year this year at a more rapid pace than probably would have occurred had there not been a drought. Beef cow slaughter through mid-June was 10% higher than a year ago on a weekly basis, above the levels realized during the 2011 through 2013 drought, which sent U.S. cattle inventory numbers to a 60-year low. In fact, year-to-date beef cow slaughter is the highest since 2011, but the two figures are nearly equal. Beef cow slaughter picked up following the severe winter storms in February, and has remained above a year earlier since then as ranchers sold cows, the lost calves are needed to manage tight forage supplies. He also said we started this year with just over 31 million beef cows and just slightly more than that at the beginning of 2011. At the same time, heifer slaughter year to date is up 9% from a year earlier, partly as the result of comparing to 2020 with plant shutdowns and slowdowns during the second quarter. There were still substantially fewer heifers from the 2020 calf crop held as replacements and instead they went to the feedlot. Dairy cow slaughter year to date this year is down 2% from a year ago and has accounted for the smallest share of cow slaughter since 2011. He expects cow slaughter to remain higher through August, which could somewhat temper the fourth, cow, fourth quarter seasonal increase. This would leave cow slaughter for the year up 4% and when coupled with increased heifer slaughter and 1% smaller calf crop, the January 22 U.S. cattle inventory would be down nearly 2% from the beginning of 2021 and nearly the same at the beginning of 2012. In his analysis, Nalivka said, uh, depending upon demand and weather in 2022, um, that portends higher prices. But again, 
think budgets, break evens, marketing, and risk management. He is from uh, Sterling. 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 Wow. Well, not livestock, but um, I'll have to look it up. I'll put it in the comments. But that's those comments from John Malivka you can find in Tri State Livestock News. Uh, you can find more about uh, the USDA and Biden's recent um, executive orders and announcements of uh, announcement of funds in both Tri State Livestock News and the Fence Post this week. Hope you're having a great week. I'm Rachel Gable, and this is your Fair Cattle Markets update for the 13th of July.